I think it's time tonight to do an instant podcast. I was going to have something a lot heavier for you guys, but I, I'm still writing it. I worked all day, so I'm tired and it's Friday night. I don't know what's going to happen. I just want to finish my writing. But there are a couple of stories that I think are very important, and I'm going to talk about them. One involves uh, unions finally doing what they do, threatening people on camera. And unfortunately, one of those threats came to fruition. The other story, not as big a story, but the economy seems to be getting a little better. Not great, but a little better. This is Gene, and you're listening to Dumbasses Talking Politics. Okay, so I I really have something really special for you folks, but I, I didn't finish it. And unfortunately, I was busy at work, and usually during lunch, I like to write some, but I didn't. So, you know, I decided to do an inst- instant podcast tonight and get something out that I think is kind of important. I think it's important because when I fly, it's kind of important. So apparently... Um, American Airlines is in dispute with the uh, Amer- the uh, the mechan- uh, air air uh, the airplane mechanics union. Okay, they're in a major fight. Uh, they're not winning. It's going to be really bad. Well, the representative from the union decided to speak. So let's listen to what he actually said. The fact of the matter is that you have a business plan. And you described that business plan to me, and that business plan um, is, is, is now you're imp- trying to implement that business plan off of a 2003 concessionary deal in the aftermath of the 9-11 attacks. You were given broad um, management prerogatives that you never had before by a bankruptcy judge, even though at the time you had billions of dollars in the bank. You just yourself said that you made $300, million, $300 billion last three, year. Three billion dollars. Okay, so three billion. You've done this with all of the concessions that you grinded out of us through bankruptcy and through that concessionary deal. And even with that, you're still making $300 million, billion. So what is the desire on your part to increase that profitability? Right. You're, you, you're, you intend to execute work rules, scope changes that would allow you to increase dramatically off the $3 billion that you're making off the backs of your unionized workers. And that's never going to happen. Where, where I stand here to tell you in front of this whole room, in front of everybody, anybody who's listening, that you're not going to get what you want. And if this okay. erupts into the bloodiest, ugliest battle that the United States labor movement ever saw, that's what's going to happen. You're already profitable enough. You compare your profit level to United, you compare it to Delta. Com- start thinking about your own workforce. Don't think about where you're at in terms of profitability and relative to other airlines in the industry. Three billion bucks, and you're looking for more concessions, and these concessions are off of our backs. That's simply not happening. And you said a very interesting point before about mediation, negotiation, and perhaps we'll get to a point where there's self-help. And I'll I'll leave you with this. I don't intend to keep the microphone. If we ever get to a point where there's self-help, we are going to engage in absolutely vicious strike action against American Airlines to the likes of which you've never seen, not organized by airline people, but organized by a guy that came out of the New York City subway system that's well inclined to strike power and who understands that the only way to challenge power is to aggressively take it to them. So I hope that we get to the point of release. I doubt that'll ever happen. But if we do, we're going to shut this place down because we're going to defend our members. We're going to defend future generations of workers that want to be employed just in a way Victor suggested, our children, our grandchildren. Not all of us go to college. Not all of us become CEOs in the airline industry or CFOs or CSOs, whatever you are. Right. Um, we, we are going to preserve these jobs. And in order for you to accomplish your business plan, you're going to have to run over our scope protections, and we're not going to let it happen. Okay, this guy wasn't a genius. There's no question about that. Uh, first off, he couldn't figure out $300 billion, $3 billion, $300 million, whatever. I mean, it, that doesn't matter. But the fact is, this guy was trying to really make it worse than it was. And by the way, it's not off union backs. 
Union, the, hey, if you don't like your job, quit and go someplace else. You don't like what you're getting paid, quit and go someplace else. This is the one thing that I don't think um, President Trump ever mentioned in his election campaign. I brought this up several times. The biggest problem with manufacturing in this country is unions. They are, they were great at their time. Back in the 1900s when kids were losing limbs, unions were important and they should have been around to sit back and add regulation to the unregulated. I totally get that. Okay, unions now are a guy is making $35 an hour, which is what, you know, well, I mean, they're making what I make an hour. I make a little more than that, but they... They make what people have to work to learn an hour. And they do minimal work. And I think unions have run their course. And see, the thing is, I don't mind that a guy who's fixing a plane is making 35 to $40 an hour to 50 to 60 to $70 an hour. What he's doing is important. I have no problem with them giving it. But the reality is, a lot of mechanics can do that. So let the market determine what they're going to make. Don't let a union determine because the unions are just there to fleece the company that these people are working for. And if you've ever been to an airline, you've ever been to an airport, you ever have to fly to Las Vegas, you know that this garbage is affecting your service. It's affecting your plane tickets costs. It's affecting your security, what you have to do to get on the plane. It's affecting everything because we can't spend the money on what we need to get you on the plane because we're too busy paying all of these unions. You've got the pilot union. You've got the stewardess union. I don't know what they call them, flight attendant unions. You've got the mechanics unions. Eventually, you can't keep fleecing a company and the company will sit there and say, listen, I can't afford this. And apparently this issue has been going on for a couple of years. That these, um, uh, that the the president of the company, the, the American Airlines has finally said, listen, we can't afford to pay you guys. We're paying all these other people. We can't make a profit. That's a capitalist system. I don't know who said this. I have no idea. I, I learned this in college. And one day I'm going to type it into Google because I know Google will give an answer, but an individual can't earn more than he's worth. Okay? Can't earn more than he's worth. When we talk about a $15 minimum wage, which, by the way, is insane. That guy who's flipping your burger, that gal who's handing you your burger, they are not, they're being paid probably two to three times what they're worth at $15 an hour. And that's going to cost jobs. You think McDonald's is going to give a damn about workers? No, they're going to sit there and say, okay, well, we just had to double the, or we had to double the minimum wage. That's fine. Well, it's not going to be double. It's going to be quarter or whatever. But let's just say we go from seven fifty to $15 an hour. We had to double our minimum wage, so I want you to cut the staff in half so that we don't have to, we can still make a profit. The companies are always going to make a profit. Okay, they're always going to make a profit. They have to. That's the point of having a business is to make a profit. And I laugh at this idiot that sits back and says, hey, you know what? You've been living on our backs. No, you haven't. You, these people can quit. Go find another job. They don't have to do that. But meanwhile, it's everyone else. It's the customer that suffers. And here's what's really bizarre about these kind of protests and the union rhetoric and that kind of garbage is the company is blamed for not paying, the corporation is blamed for not paying the individual whatever amount they want. 
And then when the company sits back, raises prices so they can make the company better because they can't lose their profit margins, they blame the company for raising the prices or lowering the service. Here's a little secret. Here's a little secret. It's the corporations that hire people. 75% of people in this country are hired by corporations. If you decide to raise minimum wage by half or you decide to do raise all this, these wages, all that's going to end up happening is they're just going to can people because in order for the company company to be successful, they have to actually go in and they have to make a profit. And here's the other dirty little secret. A lot of companies do not invest in their CEOs, their presidents, or anything like that. A lot of those companies give the CEOs, the whatever, presidents, vice presidents, they give them bonuses for making the company profitable or dealing with situations like this. It's crap. And then the rest of the money, they invest into the company. How many times have you heard, well, the company made this many billions of dollars. They are now going to do an R&D. They're going to invest in employees. I do that in my job. We do that in our job. We make a profit. We hire more employees. What is this idiot actually talking about? But that's not the big problem with this. The big problem is the threats. The threats. That's the big problem. This guy is saying they're going to burn the company down. They're going to destroy the company. There's going to be bloodshed. There's going to be war. Well, this is where things get really tricky. And this is why I actually posted this podcast. Because to be honest with you, I could have actually just skipped this podcast tonight. But I thought this was kind of important. American Airlines mechanic was accused of actually sabotaging a plane. The reason the mechanic said, uh, the reason the mechanic did it was because he said he was underwater, he had no assets, he had a divorce, he was actually doing, he was actually trying to get overtime. So he figured if the plane was actually sabotaged, the plane would have to be taken back. There would be alerts. The plane would be taken back into the stall and he could get overtime on it. Here's the thing that really trips me out. And this is the other problem with the unions. The guy's name was Abdul Mahid Maruf Ahmed Alani. Now, do I think this guy's a terrorist? Probably not. He's been in the United States for 50 years. He's been he was Americanized for 31 for some odd years. He's been Americanized for a long time. Um, he actually was uh, with the company for 31 years. This guy has been doing this for a really long time. Okay, so right off the bat, federal investigators said that you know he it wasn't. He was tampering for whatever reason, but it probably wasn't terrorism. Uh, But here's the other thing that these unions don't care about. This guy's license, mechanic's license, was suspended because he had messed up on a couple of things when fixing a plane. In other words, we can look at it in two ways. He's incompetent or he's a terrorist. Now, here's the thing. Let's just say he did it for the union's sake. That's fine. It still makes him a terrorist. But I, I, I swear to God, if you listen, if you read the AP report, which you can find at www. Um, www. Uh, Dumbasses Talking Politics. Com, I mean, the CNN report was really clear that you know what, this was a good guy. Uh, a quote, um, aviation experts said it was unlikely that Alani's actions would put passengers at risk. I'm sorry. He is messing with instrumentation that says that's talking about trim and altitude, but the passengers aren't risk. 
aren't at risk? Really? Modern jets have several devices called pilot tubes and computers that process information about speed, heading, nose angle, altitude, and other information. What they don't mention is those are backups. So if this stuff isn't working right off the bat, this is a bad thing. This is a really bad thing. And this guy deactivated the primary systems to determine altitude and trim. They also have systems that warn pilots when their information may be faulty, as apparently happened on the Miami plane. Oh, there it is. There it is. So in other words, oh, well, the backup systems worked, so it's not a big deal. John Hansman, an aeronautics professor at MIT, said pilots would notice the absence of an airspeed reading or conflicting readings and abort the takeoff as American pilots did. So in other words, oh, there was enough backup. No one needs to worry about it. So this guy, who, by the way, fits everything here. He is in, uh, he is a, he's from Iraq. So he fits that victimhood model, that intersectionality model. He's a worker. That fits that intersectionality model. So it couldn't be terrorism. And by the way, when I say terrorism, he should be accused of terrorism. He's a domestic. If he's, if he is not a terrorist for ISIS or whatever, he's still a, ter a domestic terrorist. The NRA today was accused, the NRA this week was accused of being a domestic terrorist group by San Francisco. So, why isn't this guy a terrorist? No, but they can't. And he'll probably get a slap on the hand. No big deal. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. But here's the thing, here's the point that I want you to really focus on. I want you to think about this. The union moderator said there will be blood. There will be a war. Do you think it's possible that maybe his hostile rhetoric actually motivated this guy to say, well, you know, hey, I'll just do this. Oh, by the way, uh, and by the way, that's from the AP, what I just read you. Apparently, everyone does it. They all go in and, and mess with the uh, instrumentation so they can get overtime, so he could pay his bills. What a load of garbage. It's so disturbing. Please go to dumbassestalkingpolitics.com and take a look at these entries because it's really, really disgusting. I don't know what's more disgusting. The fact that this guy actually said that there will be blood or this guy committed an act of terrorism. His motivation for the terrorism is irrelevant. It's irrelevant. It's terrorism. He's either committing radical Islamic terrorism or he's committing domestic terrorism. It's terrorism either way. I mean... Radical Islamic terrorism is not as bad as domestic terrorism. And it's not that bad because this guy's a union member and he's not a white supremacist, obviously. So the news will really ignore this. And they have. This has not been discussed on television. I had to actually read this on a couple of sites. But it really is disturbing that no one seems to care about this. Because here's the thing. I fly American all the time. I got to worry about American now. I got to worry that these pilot, these freaking mechanics are going to be pissed off enough that they're going to just mess this stuff up because they want overtime and then pray the plane doesn't crash. It's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. Well, anyway... Uh, and I'm going to finish this off real quick. Uh, Trump had some good news. He had some bad news. Um, Trump basically found out that his economy has gotten 
better or maintained. Uh, basically, job rates went up about 130, 135,000. And the big thing is that un uh, unemployment stayed the same. They also found out that about 50,000 50, new people or 5 million, I'm not sure which it is, but they found out that a lot of people re-entered the job force. That is awesome, which is why the unemployment rate didn't change. Three, it's 3.7% still. It was 3.7% last month. That's good. It's excellent, actually. It's the lowest since the 70s. So it, the unemployment rate is great. But uh, it went under expectation. They expected between 165 and 190,000 new jobs. Well, it didn't happen. So, of course, it's under expectation. Well, here's the good news. CNN, the Clinton News Network, has basically brought up that the economy is actually in pretty decent shape. Does that mean that we don't have to worry about a recession, which means we don't have to worry about uh, we don't have to worry about Trump losing in 2020? No, but right now it's beginning to look like the recession that we might run into is going to be a lot less than what we thought it was going to be. So uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what's going on. Of course, the news media is bringing other things up, like this report was released early which means it was leaked by the Trump administration. There's irony, right? The Trump administration may have leaked something. And now they're throwing a fit and they want to impeach him. I, well, they want to impeach him for anything. I, I don't know what they want to impeach him for. But, but the reality is they're really saying, oh, this was released way too early. Blah, 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 blah. It's usually released in the second week of the month after the report was drafted. But it was released early, so they're blaming Trump. Doesn't matter. The other thing the report actually showed is black unemployment and uh, Hispanic unemployment are the lowest since 1972 when they actually started measuring unemployment. So that's great news. It's going to be hard to believe that Trump's going to lose in 2020, but um, we're going to be I'm going to be really monitoring the economy because I think that's the only way he is going to lose. So that's it. Just a couple things, 20 minute podcast. I'm going to have something a lot better for you uh either tomorrow or su uh Sunday. You can follow me on Twitter at runfool r u n n i n f e w l you can uh, read some of the show notes over on www.dumbassestalkingpolitics. You can download and listen to this podcast on iTunes or uh, Apple, Ra Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Podcast Addict, and on YouTube. This is Gene. You've listened to Dumbasses Talking Politics.